We are live on Facebook and live on Zoom. So hello everybody. My name is Amanda Pauly and I am the Deputy Editor of Professional Beauty. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. I hope you're all well and good. And um, just a quick message, good luck to anybody who's returning to work today in the beauty profession. I hope your first day goes well. Um, today's webinar is going to be about non-invasive facial lifting techniques, especially cupping and a few others. And today we're joined by the amazing facialist and skincare brand founder, Antonia Burrell. So she's gonna be giving all of her advice and knowledge in this sector as she really specializes in it. And she's gonna be talking about how these techniques work, the benefits, the contraindications, what client is best suited to them, and all of that. And then at the end, we will have a 15 minute audience Q and A. So if you do have any questions for Antonia, pop them in the comment box on Facebook or on Zoom and we will get her to answer them at the end. And also at the end of this session, I'm gonna be asking Antonia how she felt about the government's announcement um, on Friday about beauty salons being able to open but without performing any facial treatments. Um, so hello Antonia, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Hi. On the live. Um, just before we kind of get into the subject matter, it'd be great if you could tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you kind of came to be a really well-known leading facialist in the industry. Oh, well, thanks for having me, first of all. It's really um, an honor to be here and to share with everybody. So hi, everybody as well. Um, so I've been in the beauty industry for about 30 years now, uh, an absolute age it feels, but it kind of doesn't feel that way either. Um, and it all started with a passion for skincare. And when I was training at the London College of Fashion at the time, there was this wonderful lady that came in and she was talking about skin and products and the <laughs> ingredients and I just fell in love with her I thought my gosh I'd love to do what she does I'd love to be her and um, that just ignited a passion for skin even more even more than the one that I had before and then I thought to myself gosh I'd really also love to have my own skin brand one day and then you know you just get on with life and you don't think about it too much and then 17 years later lo and behold my skincare <laughs> brand launches um so I've always just been consistent in my passion. I've always stayed within the industry and I've just developed it as it's gone along. I've continued to learn, continued to read, continued to sort of have a diverse uh, range of customers, continued to go on training courses. And I think that's po possibly the way really. It's about making mm -hmm. sure that, you know, you're continuing to refresh yourself, keeping ahead of the, the, the curve in a way, and really understanding your consumer. And um, because when you offer the most amazing service, coupled with fantastic treatments, then I think that's one of the ways where people absolutely talk about you. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, we're having you here today to talk about non-invasive facial lifting techniques, because that is something you are so well known for, and you get such great results of it. Um, but there's so many clients out there who aren't aware of how effective non-invasive facial lifting techniques can be for re-sculpting and firming the face. Um, you know, in your opinion, what are the pros and cons of non-invasive versus facial, um, invasive facial lifting techniques? Yeah, so invasive facial techniques are your classic facelift where you'd go in to see a surgeon um, and they'd do all the consultations and mark and, you know, really chat with you about what you want. And clearly, you know, you've got certainly risk I mean first of all you're going under uh, general anaesthetic and with that comes many many health risks but also you've got risk that it might actually go wrong how long is it going to last for um is the scarring going to be okay is that going to be remaining healthy is that going to become mm. keloid which is more uh, apparent on a darker skin tone really um major bruising and you've got massive 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 time for downtime um, and that can range from anything for, from, you know, six weeks right up to three months, depending on what you've had done. The cost as well is colossal. So yeah. you know, people may find that that's just out of their reach and they just sit there thinking, oh, I really want this or I want that. And but feeling that they can't actually even afford to go there. Um, so so that's, that's really a very broad overview of the mm. more invasive types. But then the thing is in non-invasive, there's a whole plethora of, of services that are available and they're becoming more and more sophisticated. So the classic ones that we know about are Botox mm. or fillers. Um, I'll just sort of talk about those two first. So Botox is where it's normally preferred to, uh, performed by a doctor or a, um, a dentist or a nurse. And it's where you have the botulin um, uh, injected into the muscle fascia um, and it basically sort of stops it from moving around it 
freezes it in a way. Um, and this will help um, to stop any lines and wrinkles from forming. It helps to keep everything looking nice and firm for quite a while. Same with the dermal fillers, normally inserted into the cheek areas where you tend to get the facial uh, labial lines going on and certainly sometimes into the um, crease areas of the, between the eyebrows there. Um, so all, all great if that's, if that's your bag. I mean, if you, want, if you want to have those things and not have to feel that you've got to keep returning to the salon every two, three, two weeks to have something continued, then mm -hmm. absolutely great. If you travel a lot, you've got a busy lifestyle and those things and you want that instant treatment or it might be where your lines are severely wrinkled and severely deep and you just think, goodness gracious, I don't want to have to go through the long time of waiting to get the result from a more milder treatment. I want something that's instant. I want something that's proven to work. I want something that's going to make my wrinkles go away now. And I want it mm. to stay away and I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to worry about it. That, and so people have got different needs. So you need to kind of go for what's out there. So Botox and fillers are there to help to smooth out the skin. I wouldn't say that they are uh, treatments that stimulate collagen and cellular renewal and all this kind of thing, but they're very, very much about instant fixes that make you look great and help you to feel better if you've got those lines and deep lines and wrinkles there. Then you've got things like the micro needling or the chemical pill. So medical micro needling is where you have the needles. I'm sure lots of you kind of know about this one, but you know, you can actually get them that go quite deep, 1.5, mm -hmm. sometimes even two millimeters deep. So, so things like this are non-invasive, which is where you can link them in with really amazing cocktails of mesotherapy where you can add in wonderful things like DMAE for firming and organic silicon and potent vitamin C and vitamin A and reversitol and all these major antioxidants that you can actually then push into the epidermis. I like the effect of that because it's like you're working with deeply stimulating collagen and, and skin renewal, kind of damaging the tissue in a way. Um, but then you're also inserting all of these wonderful ingredients to really help to support the skin and help to renew the skin help to stimulate cellular renewal as well so I, I like that it's kind of like you know that's more on the on the lines of where I kind of tend to sit it's quite invasive yes it can cause some blood um, some bleeding and the customer walk away looking red raw but what that's doing then is just stimulating that renewal so that's non-invasive but it's still um, a little bit of downtime there as well where you'll need to kind of go and shield you, you know you have you're not going to be having your interview for your best best job the next day so you need to really plan that treatment in and make sure you've got a couple of days to downtime and there is going to be some scarring there but the results actually are very very good and that's again if you don't want to go down that botox route you don't want to go down the injection route because i don't like injections and a lot of people who don't like injections so if you don't want to go down that route then i would say micro needling is a really good kind of second option um, coupled with some very potent um, uh, sort of mesotherapy type ampule to go with it with the, 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 for your customer. Then um, I would say chemical peels is another non-invasive base, uh, therapy for lifting. Yes, it's all about cellular renewal and marks and all of that, but actually really, really effective for tightening, for firming that skin. And when it's stimulating that collagen and that renewal, you're actually, then you've just got this, what I call this beautiful glossy glow. Amazing mm -hmm. for that sort of fresh, smooth look. So I like chemical peels and you can sometimes interlink your chemical peels with your micro needling. Then we come on to two of my favorites, um, HIFU uh, therapy and also the ALT therapy um, and also radio frequency. So HIFU is all about using ultrasound um, and ultrasound is where, you know, we're, we're going quite deep into the skin, where damaging the tissues to a certain extent. But I, I like that because again, it's quite deep, it's quite thorough. We're going, working, through the skin we're going past the skin but we're not actually having to inject into the skin which means then that we can do that as therapists um i also then like the old therapy and radiotherapy as well because it's a gentler uh, treatment it's not so hard or not, not, not that the um, ultrasound is hard but it's a much gentler service where your customers can then come in every two weeks and have another one every two weeks and sometimes i find that customers do want to kind of feel that they're coming back every kind of couple of weeks because they <laughs> like that thing of oh yes it's going very well yes let's do it and they like that and then you've got some customers who say well, look just give me the microneedling make me bleed like a vampire I don't care 
I'll see you again in three months. Is that all right? So it's about really understanding your customer as well and what their needs are and what their desires are and what their personality um, is about. So all of these treatments essentially will give you collagen and elastin stimulation. Um, they'll all help to stimulate a lift um, within the skin and give it a beautiful firm texture. Um, yeah, there's another one I've got written down here as well which is silhouette soft therapy. Again, it's another type of um, ultrasound. So you've got all of these different mechanisms out there to deliver that for you. <laughs> and just before we kind of move on to facial cupping, um, which you specialise in, um, Sarah Wilkins has just asked about LED as well and whether you would recommend that for kind of um, reshaping, lifting, all that kind of thing. Um, LED's okay. I wouldn't say... It's a non. It's not a, for me personally. It's not a technique that I would use for non-invasive face lifting, face facial kind of like immediate results. It's something that I would probably add in. So maybe after a micro needling session, or after a chemical peel session, or after an ultrasound session, I'd add the LED in. It's not something that I would say, right? Let's just do an LED and let's just sort of use this as part of my non-invasive price list it would for me it would be an add-on um because i think it's great but it's very very gentle it's even more mm. gentle than the radiotherapy so it's effective but it takes quite a while for you to start seeing those results so um i believe customers see those results but if you're looking at non-invasive therapy in the in the terms of radiofrequency dermal fillers microneedling these things are quite advanced and i think mm. that's LED should be a supplement to those. Yeah. Um, and we've just had one more question. I'm just going to try and put these in while we're talking about the things um, from Shakira. And she's asked about these techniques that you've spoken about. Um, can clients have these if they're on medication? Like, are there certain medications that facialists need to be aware of that would be a contraindication to a client having like microneedling and chemical peels? Yeah, so I think that all, all forms, you know, that all your consultation will inform you of all of those kind of things. So it's just going to be the classics. Um, is, has you, have you had Retin-A or have you had any of those kind of treatments before? You, have you had an operation within the last month or so? Are you taking any medication? What, what that medication is for? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you suffer with claustrophobia or anxiety? You know, it's like even asking them what their pain threshold is. It's like if you're mm -hmm. getting for a massage, you tend some to, well I do anyway ask them what pressure they like um, is it deep medium or light I mean if, you know depending on what they're working with um, so yeah you just go through a really really thorough um, uh, consultation to make sure that and I think when you're training when you're doing your your CPD anyway and you're doing your CPD in these training courses they will go through all of the major contraindications with you anyway and that will be a whole set two hours or one hour of your training day uh, so yes like with all with all therapies and with all beauty treatments you've always got contraindications um that you need to be able to understand so, you know, certainly do they have any metal bits inside them you know implants uh metal metal it's all sorts any knee replacements things like that yeah brilliant thank you antonia for answering that question um and obviously you've spoken about a lot of non-invasive facial lifting techniques but you specialize in facial cupping and um, can you tell us a bit about how this technique works and um, the benefits of it and what skincare concerns it's most suitable for treating yeah so i absolutely love facial cupping and it is a non-invasive technique as well i've specifically not mentioned it because i wanted to give it its own its own love and its <laughs> own so basically um the facial cupping works with very cleverly with something called negative pressure. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of that before, and it seems quite strange, and it's like negative pressure, well, I'm meant to be being positive <laughs> around here. But this is where negative becomes positive. So you've got positive pressure, which is when um, you're using something like a rose quartz roller, or any sort of roller on the skin, or even your hands, to work into the skin. So you're putting pressure on and in and down. That's called positive pressure. And we all know the benefits of massage for lymph drainage and for, you know, blood circulation, etc. Negative pressure is when you're doing the opposite. So with the facial cupping, it's actually pulling um, and releasing that fascia. So you're not pushing in, you're lifting it and gently sort of um, taking apart 
the, the, the fascia, you're opening it up. So, you know, for example, when you have a back massage and your therapist goes over those knotty areas and it's like, oh, that aches, but it's a nice ache. That tissue right there, that fascia, is where it's all become knotty. So normally the muscle, the muscle fibers, as we all know, are long, nice, thin strands put together and sit together to, to you know, move and work with us. When there's a particular stress, they knot together to kind of work harder to keep us up or in, or, you know, they work harder. And if you don't release them, like if you don't even release adrenaline from your body, they just stay there, get harder and begin to ache. Same in the face with the facial cupping. So what I love about that is that you're not trying to dig in to really release it. And that can be very, very painful on the face if you try to do that too early and too deep. Um, but it's it's still necessary as part of a facial lifting treatment, though, don't get me wrong. But with the cupping, it just assists you in a great way because it helps to release in a different way. So it's bringing back what we call the chi, the energy, the flow. It's stimulating the blood flow to that area in a deeper, more positive way than it would if you were pushing in because everything's being lifted and you, your, your muscles just aren't used to being worked, never mind being lifted in that way. Mm. So it does that for you. Um, and again, it's working at a deeper level. It enables you as a therapist to work at a much deeper level on the skin. Once you've done a bit of warming massage on the face, then you go in with your cupping it then releases that and it just warms at a deeper level for faster. And then you could say, right, I'm going to go back in now and do some more deep work and you can alternate the two and you can go very, very, very deep into some of like the, the muscles that tend to get very, very um, tense, like the masseter muscle, the biggest muscle of the face. It holds on to a lot. It informs a lot. This is what pulls your eyes down. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of notice what well, I'm beginning to notice now at 48 where sometimes I wake up in the mornings and my eyes are just down here you know and that is because mm -hmm. just it, gravity pulls everything down so what the facial cupping does it just helps to lift it up but lifting it up in a different way um yeah. and a slightly different technique that's very different and very fresh for the body and um how long would you normally do facial cupping in a facial for mm -hmm. and are there any contraindications for the treatment yeah Wow. Well, I would sometimes do facial cupping for about half an hour. Um, so quite a while. Um, and I kind of go over one area and then leave it alone and then work, go to another area. So when I mean half an hour, I'm speaking about the decollete area, mm -hmm. the neck area. Sometimes I'm going right to the back of the neck, um, chin and jawline areas, the face, the forehead, around the eyes. So you know, to get really deep and to really work on somebody's issues, I find lots of people either have issues on the cheeks where they grind their teeth or um, on the forehead area there where the most tension is. And sometimes even on the neck where people want to get rid of the textures there and the lines um, and, 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 and literally refine and redefine this area here because the cupping actually does that. Yeah. And the reason I know that for myself is because I do lots of... Um, uh, consumer training with this technique and there was one day I think I had four four sessions and I was just cupping away cupping away eyes 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 and the next couple of days I could not believe my even my own eyes my <laughs> eyes lifted to when I was 14 so all this <laughs> lifted my eyes here all of my eyelid area the occipital area was all lifted this was uh, the under eye area was very much firm but what got me the most was this jawline area mm. it was firm and I felt like <clears throat> like a, a queen unbelievable because the muscles just realigned and mm. then they pulled me up so they were doing their job with pride and that's what this technique does and I've never ever experienced anything like that ever before yeah and I think the jawline area is such a hard area to really tone and firm really hard um it's an issue that we always hear facialists and therapists talking about clients really want work because it is really difficult so this is a great thing to try out if anybody's interested and this kind of leads on to my next question about where can therapists go to kind of learn this technique and kind of skill up in um cupping yeah so if you want to come and see me once covid is over um <laughs> We are just about to launch a training course, um, which is also uh, BabTAC accredited, which means you can use it as part of your CPD and get your insurance for it as well. 
So we're just about to launch that where you can come in, learn about cupping and also learn about different skin issues that the cupping is amazing for. Learn about how you can, you know, really tailor your treatments and go deep with the cupping. So we're going to be doing some really interesting, unique uh, techniques and showing you how you can actually get that sculpting and that lymph drainage um, and that lifting, but also, you know, really achieve the tone because it's mm. very for the skin um, as well and how it links beautifully with other services that you have within your clinics yeah um, and you're getting some great love on Facebook I just wanted to throw this in um, oh, and that actually said um, I'm a oh. beauty therapist and I wish I could be like you which I just want to love that and um, Sampa Nandini on Facebook said that she wishes she could be like you um, and Matt Taylor said that this is great it's really engaging so that's lovely oh, um, guys you know that <laughs> Oh, uh, also we've had a question from Anora on Facebook actually just about facial cupping training and she said she's only ever heard about face, uh, about cupping for the body she's not really heard about it for the face um obviously I've only really heard about it through you Antonia so is it quite a niche thing or is it just more common on the body in general yeah it's more it, it, cupping is is uh has been known just to be on the body because um it was this sort of classic Chinese treatment where you went in to have your herbs and then you got your cupping but it was on the back and some customers would come to, to see me and it's like yeah you need to take your t-shirt off please and then I'd see these massive black purple mm. rings and so people were like oh dear no 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 no, I'm not having cupping because it's going to make me look like I've just been beaten up no it doesn't mm. so relatively new on the face I've been doing it for ages but I just launched it as part of my facial in a box because mm ways that I could offer my facial treatment to customers that began to move away for for change of life situations but it doesn't leave you with um this kind of like deep bruising so it is quite new and that's why you need to come and learn the technique properly um, and yeah. that's the thing because if you don't learn the technique properly what can happen is that you can end up with major bruising on the face you can so yeah. the suction cups I mean mine are here okay mm my suction cups are quite firm okay really quite solid you'll probably get lots on the market that are quite bendy and you mm. know you them um, mine are really quite firm which means that the gen the, the the level of suction that you're getting and the level of sculpting that you're getting is going to be quite firm as well which means if you're doing it in clinic and you're going over a particular area for half an hour imagine i said 30 minutes mm hour facial or 90 minute facial it's actually more so you it's about coming to learn and say right how can I get the best uh, without leaving my customer with major bruising and if there is bruising how do I console my customer and tell her exactly why and what's going on and what to expect yeah and um, we've just had loads of questions come in actually about um, the training for cupping so I'm going to try and go through um, some of them um, Ratatan Corn on Zoom has asked um, will facial cupping make the facial skin and muscle bruised after doing it like it does when you see videos of it being done on the body no <laughs> it's much gentler isn't it in a way it's 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 much much <laughs> gentler so we don't actually leave the cup on the skin so on the body the cup is left on so it's put on and it's left on and that do you remember what i was talking about that negative pressure earlier that's what's doing the drawing that's what's doing the pulling you see but it's not what we're doing. We constantly keep that cup moving. Uh, mm. And that, that's the technique that I'd be teaching you <laughs> of why and how. And, you know, it's about that deep understanding of anatomy. Um, mm. so, so, no, it doesn't. Mm. You. And um, Sarah Grecian on Facebook has just asked, is facial cupping similar to facial vacuum suction then? It is, but it's deeper. Yeah. Much, much deeper. Um, and lots of people are asking about with the training, how long does the training typically take to learn facial cupping? And are there any kind of pre requirements um, that you need to have to be able to undertake this kind of training? Yeah, so you need to be fully qualified as a fully fully qualified as a therapist. You need to have insurance that's active, and you then need to come and see me and spend one day with me. That's <laughs> all it takes. So if you're a practicing therapist, that's even better because you're then more confident to, when you're handling the face. I'd rather, I'd rather that because then if somebody's not had lots of experience with doing facials before, mm. you can be, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but it, you can be a bit timid 
this is about being really confident with the skin and, and showing that confidence to your customer. So if you've got experience, and I would, I would probably say there's a prerequisite to having at least, at least six months um, facial in salon professional experience. Mm. And so many questions that have come through is everyone's dying to know where they can find the details of the training with you, Antonia. And okay whether it will just be kind of London based or whether um, there'll be more regional opportunities. Well, this is the thing, you know, guys, I used to live in London and um, I'm a mummy now and I've moved out to the countryside. I live in Derbyshire now. So I'm thinking because Derbyshire is quite central and there's a quite a few offices and, and centres around near where I live. So I was actually thinking and wondering, you know, where am I going to actually do this training and looking at different mm. venues during lockdown, actually, what a great time. <laughs> so, I am definitely going to operate a course in London. I'm absolutely going to be operating a course in Derbyshire, uh, South Derbyshire near East Midlands Airport. Um, so that means it's, it's quite central. And once I've done that and, I'm, and they're running nicely, then we may look at one a bit further north, um, depending on the demand. But I think Derbyshire and London are, are going to be the two starting points. In terms of finding out more about this course, if you want to, and I'd really like you all to, if you're interested, um, if you can just send an email to info at antoniaburrell.com and in the subject, just put interested in facial cupping course. And then what my assistant will do is just mark you down on our list. So we already have loads of people interested who um, actually came to our consumer courses as therapists, um, but then can't really do it in their salons without the insurance. So. Um, we've already got a waiting list. It's just waiting until we're, you know, in a position to offer this because it was literally about to launch just before lockdown. Can you believe yeah, it? Wow. Um, so, so as soon as we're in a position to, you know, get back to training and get back to safe working, then you're going to be hearing from me, and it's going to be such an exciting thing. I've mm. got so much to share with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So much to share with you. So um, yeah, it's going to be a great day. A great day. Yeah, brilliant. And just for anybody, because I know a couple of people, they said they missed the email. What I'll do is at the end of this session, I'll pop it into the chat box on Facebook because this webinar stays there indefinitely. So you can pick it up there. I'll pin it to the top so you'll be able to find it and you can send the email. Um, just a couple of other people have also asked because we have a couple of international viewers, some from South Africa um, and elsewhere. And they're just Hello. asking whether you would do any kind of online version of your course or any kind of online resources for people who are in other countries to kind of learn from you? Um, that's another thing that we've been looking into as well. It's slightly difficult because I do need to see you do that technique. Mm. I mean, you know, need to kind of be there to watch you, to hear the noise that it makes, because it actually makes a certain type of noise. <laughs> I know when that noise is being made that it, I mean, I could still hear that noise. I mean, let, let me just let me look into that. Um, I'm keen to help wherever I can. Trust me, I really am. So let me just look into how we get these two courses started off and whether or not it might even mean that we do a, 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 a Zoom course for the cupping. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet. We need to get our heads around that because it needs to be done properly. I'm a bit of a, a sticker for that things need to be done well and I need to feel and know that you're confident and you're doing it competently too so just let me let me think about that one and, and mm. uh, some advice and I, I will come back to you guys um ASAP um and there's another thing I'm thinking that's coming from here as well is that whether or not um I sort of set up an Antonio Burrell um professional course Facebook group so that people can maybe join there and then you can hear sort of all the updates about training and all the updates about cupping um, and some other courses that will start running as well, which are really in innovative, really modern, and they're going to really spur you on and push you forward. And Antonia, just before we kind of carry on with this webinar, everyone's asking if you could just repeat the email address again. I think um, yeah. people have got a pen and paper now. <laughs> yeah, you're ready. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Info. I N F O info at Antonia Burrell dot com. Brilliant. Thank you, Antonia. Well, and obviously, um, earlier we were talking about some of the other non invasive facial lifting techniques that you can use to achieve um, re sculpting and firming of the face. And I know we spoke about a few. Is there anything else um, that you feel like we haven't covered that we should? and what the benefits are and who they're suitable for. 
Um, and obviously, of any of the ones that we spoke about before, um, are they only right for certain types of clients with certain types of skin issues? You know, um, is there anything particularly about these um, techniques that people need to know? Okay, so we were speaking about the um, ultrasound and the radiotherapy in particular. Mm. There's another one that I, I, I quite like, but I just don't actually like it on myself because I don't like the feeling, but it's the microcurrent. So oh, that, yeah. that's quite popular. And that's where it's kind of directly stimulating and working with the electrons um, on, the, on the muscle fiber and on, on the cells to stimulate that tissue to really kind of shatter it and get it working. And that, that really helps to lengthen. It's like it's kind of doing a involuntary exercise. It's like you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, legs bums and tums class <laughs> that's um that i didn't mention earlier that's quite good but i i tend to roll with the ultrasound and the radiotherapy both of which i like because the ultrasound is very much is deep so that that mm -hmm. in terms they both heat um and the ultrasound heats the uh the goes goes through the tissue through the tissue and it heats up to about 55 degrees c so quite hot um mm -hmm. But what it also does is that it damages uh, the collagen and elastin fibres to then stimulate repair, similar to micro and even, but it, it does it in a very clever way. There's no blood whatsoever. And you'd walk out of the salon, no one would ever know, but you've had a super deep treatment. Then we've got the radiotherapy, um, which heats up to about 42 degrees centigrade. That doesn't damage the tissue, but it's something where that customer would have to come in every two to three weeks to then, you know, keep that rejuvenation going on. And it could be something that you add on at the end of a facial or whatever. Mm. Um, skin types that they're not suitable for. Um, again, I would be saying sort of deep pustular acnes, um, very aggressive, inflamed acne, possibly you wouldn't really be wanting to look at any of these treatments for somebody who's got telangiectasia either. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't really want to be looking at, at any of these if somebody has, you know, visible eczema or psoriasis going on on their skin or any type of sunburn or sensitivity or rashes that you're not sure about. The skin needs to be clear. The person needs to be reasonably healthy. Um, and also if somebody's had Botox, um, or dermal fillers, you don't really want to be doing any cupping um, in those areas for about three weeks after yeah. they've had those particular treatments. Some customers are like, no, just do it now, but it, it's, it's, you're better off just to, just to wait. And some people um, wait for even longer, but I'd say three weeks is about a good time um, to wait. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> and of these other techniques, are there any that are particularly good to team with facial cupping? Or would you always suggest that you do facial cupping solo? Oh gosh, no. So <laughs> I would definitely team um, ultra, ultrasound with facial cupping, radio frequency with facial cupping. Mm. Um, I would also team up the microcurrent with cu facial cupping. I would team up uh, mesotherapy and medical micro needling with cupping. You can team it up with anything, but it just depends on when you do your cupping, you know, so if I was doing a, a medical micro needling treatment, I mean, I'm just, you know, sometimes I really want to stimulate that skin. So I would do a gentle cupping first mm. to get blood circulation going, to get that warmth going. And then I would probably do a, a reasonably um, short needle micro needling. But it's all about the power of the consultation, really. So, yes, yeah. I would absolutely team cupping up with um, other non-invasive therapies and possibly team a number of them up together and then equally there'd be times when I would just literally do the cupping on its own um mm -hmm. depending I really just want to get that lift and somebody doesn't want to you know it's not about collagen repair it's not really about anything else except deep tissue muscle tension releasing um you know face lifting face sculpting lymph drainage those mm -hmm. things cupping could then be you know it's a good enough standalone treatment to be done on its own as well and how often would you recommend that a client has facial cupping as well? Um, gosh, as often as once a week, if she wants to come and see you that often. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the thing is, once you start doing it on yourself and once you start having it done, it's the most incredible feeling, first of all. And secondly, it just literally, it's just this magical lifting that you get of your muscle tissues and, and the fibres. And so it, it can become an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not a bad addiction to have is it yeah <laughs> if you don't have those lines and wrinkles and my my i've got a major motto for skincare and for the for the industry which is prevention's always better than cure always so if you don't have lots of wrinkles and you don't have 
you know, the jawline that's beginning to sag and the neck area that's beginning to look, you know, whatever it looks like, right? Some people call it <laughs> turkey, whatever, you know, whatever the name is. Then I think cupping is something to do, which helps to stimulate that collagen anyway. We all need that. It helps to keep the gravity away by lifting. It helps to even out the skin tone. It helps to smooth the texture of the skin. Your skin looks beautifully glossy and glowing, but it really helps to, you know, take the memory away from those muscles because when we express ourselves, we go like this. Mm. Okay. These lines are kind of naturally occurring. They are there. But if I don't do anything about them, they're going to stay and stay and stay and get deeper and deeper and deeper. Whereas if I'm preventing them from becoming permanent by working on the fascia underneath, then this is what I love about the cupping. Um, and it's easy, it's super relaxing. Ultrasound isn't relaxing. Radio mm. frequency isn't a relaxing service, but this you're getting that deep relaxation. You're getting the results very, fairly quickly. Um, and that's why I love it so much. <laughs> I think you're selling it just with your skin, Antonia, because so many people are saying how amazing your skin looks, <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> um, you. which I thought I would share. Oh, well. um, but I think another kind of important question to ask you, Antonia, is where do you see facial treatments developing in the future? And are there any kind of trends that we should be aware of? Mm. So I really believe that facial treatments are going to become more bespoke okay so you won't necessarily have on your price list the this facial and the that facial you will just have bespoke facial or you know it's going to be a charge for your time as opposed to a particular thing because it's no longer just about the wrinkles or just about the pigmentation or just about you know we're now looking and should be thinking about incorporating things like blue light uh, pollution into our treatments and you know environmental issues and high antioxidants and it's it's a real myriad of things that we need to really start thinking about that's the first thing the second thing I think is so bespoke's the first thing you need to start thinking about bespoke services and charging accordingly but if you are going to think about bespoke services it's but then down to you to ensure that your CPD is up to date that you continue to learn you continue to enroll onto courses you continue to stay ahead of the curve may not necessarily be enrolling onto courses, but you need to read. There's loads of great um, journals out there, um, manuscripts out there, online articles out there that's go that talk about skin in a deep way. This is not just about superficial. Go and have a look at some of the dermatology reports that really go into the depths of the mitochondria. What is the mitochondria doing in that cell and how does it inform the DNA? And what are these electrical processes and these electrical exchanges what is this you know what's the cytokine how does mm. it's all of those things get deep get really 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 deep so that you're really informed and you're confident so that's the second thing the <laughs> third thing is super big so i think that you know the co your consultations that you do needs to become part of your selling tools so you need to spend a bit more time on your consultation, really talk to your customer in a way that you've never spoken to her before, get her to open up, get her to be really honest with you, get her to tell you things that she doesn't like about maybe the treatment that was done before last week or the week before. Because with that understanding, that's the only way that you can really develop your service to become excellent for her. This is, a, this is about excellent. This is about the epitome of skin health for that particular customer and there's only going to be one julie andrews there's only going to be one you know sarah barnes nobody else is going to quite have a skin like her so how do you tailor that and the only way that you can tailor it is through a deep consultation which is talking about skin products her habit what her lifestyle is you know it's not about you saying right well cleanse three times in the morning and cleanse at <laughs> night and then you use this mm -hmm. night cream and then no, you need to tailor your routine you're going to give to her around her life. Because if you don't, she's not going to necessarily do it. She might do, but I'm a, I'm a busy mum now and I kind of get it from a different angle. It's about what works for me. And if I can say to my hairdresser or my therapist or my this or that, say, look, I need this, this and this and this and this. I need it to be effective, but I need it to fit in. What can you do? Then you can do that start off easy and then you can build it in because they, they then trust you some of them will want to, some of some people will be like i don't care how long it takes just tell me everything i've got an hour every day morning and night i will do everything you say and there are some people that just don't have the time 
So it's really about understanding your customer in the deep way and you're providing a service, a 360 holistic service to them and your consultation needs to be your sales tool, not only from product, but to your services, how long they are and your treatment plans, but also to that person. Who is she and mm. what want from you? Yeah, I think that's so such valuable advice and I think you're just going to get the client's trust, aren't you, completely. Um, but that was everything to kind of do with our webinar topic. But obviously there was some really big news on Friday um, for everywhere in the UK in terms of when salons and spas, etc., can reopen. And obviously lots of businesses have opened today, which is brilliant. But the good news kind of came with a caveat of no facial treatments can be performed at the moment, which obviously is such a huge chunk of what our industry provides. I mean, how did you feel about that announcement on Friday? And um, yeah, how are you feeling about it all, really? Yeah, well, sorry, um, just before I talk about that, can I just mention one more thing as yeah, well? Yeah, of course, yeah. About the future of facials uh, and skin treatments. It's also about studying a diverse range of skin tones, you know, black skin, Asian skin, mm -hmm. Chinese skin, what do they do? How do they work? You know, what, how do you treat them? And you think, you might think to be sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know, I haven't got a clue. Well, this is, this is going to be part of the training that I'm going to be offering. And it's going to be really helping you to understand things like that, which is going to be really important going forward. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> onto the government announcement. I mean, I was just so highly disappointed. I just thought to myself, mm -hmm. oh, for goodness sake, it's not really that different to a beard shave um you know the, the proximity is more or less the same uh, so i just couldn't believe it to be honest with you um but yeah sorry tell me that the, the, so say that again you're asking me what i think yeah just what, what you think about the government's decision and you know how you think it's going to impact the industry as well because i guess they've announced this but they've announced it and they've not really given the timeline of how long this restriction is going to be in place no. which obviously is very difficult for a lot of businesses who are trying to get up and running again after three to four months of just not being able to work. Absolutely. Yeah. I just think it's absolutely crazy. I mean, one of the things that they should be at least offering is some guidance to say, right, we could be looking at an opening date in X week. If we, if you can prove that you're COVID ready by this, this and this standard, and this is the form you need to fill out. You know, I've also seen that there's, there is a course, a sanitization course that you can go on and you can prove that you've now learnt to be, you know, COVID ready by doing this hygiene and sanitation course. Why not say that then and say, look, mm. this we've designed in conjunction with X awarding body. If you all, you know, get on this, it's, it's half a day, you can do it on Zoom, whatever it is. Give us some guidelines and the amb amb ambiguity needs to absolutely go. Um, even to the point if they just say, you know, the masks that you need to wear are something like the um, FFP3 type masks or the FFP2 type masks, which are the major kind of filters that help to filter, uh, help to protect you as a therapist. Because as I was saying earlier, you know, the, you're going to be exposed to lots of people throughout your day and your clients aren't going to be exposed to the proximity that you are to lots of different people so as a therapist it's so important that you protect yourself and I think that you should be thinking about getting more than just the blue mask um, in, in, in therapy more than that so look at getting an you know I just think regardless of the government um, guidelines look at getting an FFP2 or an FFP3 mask because I think the FFP2 filters at 94% and the P3 filters at 98%. And I'm going to be getting those because as an asthmatic, I need to make sure that I am totally protected. And they look serious. Um, I think they're still, um, I don't think they're washable, but that's really good. And then it could also mean that you get a surgical gown you know, um, to cover yourself with, suitable shoes, no, no, no bare skin, so no open-toed shoes, you put tights and socks on, and obviously you've got gloves and you're covered, you know, uh, there's no skin showing from, uh, with your arms to your, to your hands. I think if, if, that's, if that's, you know, how it's going, which is what the dentists are doing, and you've got your shield on, there's absolutely no reason why we can't go back to work. So I think there is, um, something that's out there at the moment, which is a, um, a professional beauty. What's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> is it, is it um, oh gosh, you know when you fill out the pledge? Um, you know when you sign something to become part of a, 
um yes yes Chantel, petition. That's petition. thank you Chantel. So, so petition thank out you. There, yeah uh, because you know i'm okay to work i think it's that mm. let's all sign it let's really barrage boris johnson let's t- tweet mm. him instagram him let's let's really get involved in this and say you know i'm ready to work I've, I've written, I've written letters. Um, I've sent emails. Um, mm. I have, and I, I'm continually lobbying them because it's just absolutely ridiculous that we cannot go back to work. Manicures and pedicures can still very close proximity to a customer if you're doing a manicure. Mm. So I just, look, come on, let's, let's get serious here. Um, we're okay. We know what we're doing. Um, and another thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to recommend for you, the government might not recommend it, but there's these wonderful wipes that are great for surfaces and for the hands, um, and they're called Clinel. And you might find that, well, I, I, I know that they're used in dentists and they're also used in hospitals. Mm. Um, they're brilliant for, um, they work against coronavirus and they're antibacterial and they're this and they're that. They're absolutely amazing. Yeah, Shield and the mask is absolutely, mm. and I would, go, I would even go further to say a PP3 mask or a PP4 mask is, is vital um, because you need to think about protecting yourself as well. That's, that's the crucial thing here. Um, yeah. To- <laughs> and actually, Antonia, um, Sandra's just asked if you could um, say the names of the masks again because um, she's an asthmatic as well and she just missed the names of them. So, um, F, F, so Freddy, Freddy, Papa 3. I'll, put, I'll type it in the box too. Yeah, Freddy, Freddy, Papa 3. Freddy, Freddy, Papa, FFP3 and FFP2. Oh, I've just popped that in the comment box as there well. You go. Please yeah. just get in there. So they're the type well. of masks that you need to, you know, really think about getting and, and, and possibly your clothes because we're saying in our clinic when we open again, if somebody's come in and they've been on uh, public transport to get to work, we're asking them to change. Mm. So we're saying... Can you, can you bring an extra set of clothes so that if you've come in on public transport, you've got a second set of clothes to change into. So if, if that's not what, if you're not going to do that, then, you know, look at investigating some surgical gowns um, and your aprons. You know, this is not really about the glamour anymore. This is about looking like, you know, you're walking your clients into a, um, a surgical theatre. <laughs> uh, this is what we need to do. And mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing. Um, I think it's a really, really good thing now. I think it's, you know, but just let's get on with it, please. Yeah, and obviously you said as well, like um, we need to be bombarding Boris a lot more. And I think the industry yeah, well has been it. really going to their MPs and trying to show that salons are safe. And um, I think a lot has been achieved, but obviously more needs to be done because the facial treatments have blocked off. What do you think the message should be? I'm asking as well, because we're actually interviewing um, MP Caroline Noakes on Friday and she's doing um, a webinar with us and it'd be great and to say to her, you know, like, these are the messages, these are the key things that the industry want to say to you. Um, You know, what do you think our united message should be? Look, we're responsible human beings. We're responsible for hygiene practices all the time. Um, We care about our customers. They are our business. And so now with this heightened level of obviously needed hygiene we're ready to step up we're not ready to step up we have and we're ready to get back to work we're literally waiting to un- put the key in the door and unlock we are ready we've got people in the salons who've got their salons ready they're taking photographs with their masks with their couches you know with everything sanitized and ready to go what we need from her really this is what we're saying we're ready. And I would say, mm-hmm. if you mention on, on Friday that, you know, we're even looking at these more surgical masks, the screens, the screening yeah. in between treatment rooms, the screening in between treatment beds, that whatever it is, we're ready. But even mentioning to her this medical grade type mask that we're mm-hmm. have, where, why doesn't then she, you know, tell us that that's, that's what you're expecting us to do? Mm-hmm. You know, some guidelines Absolutely. and we'll, we'll, we'll stick to them. Um, and we'll, we'll get going because these things are accessible to us. We can go and buy um, FFP3. We can go and do all the things that are needed. And it is just this, exactly the same as what the hair salon is going to be doing. is sanitising, creating yeah. shields, creating screens, making sure that door handles and everything are, you know, clean, cleansed and sanitised. Because it's just as much as about protecting us and our families mm. as individuals is it is about protecting our, our our customers so it's a double thing we're not going to be careless we're, we're not careless anyway so 
come on, give us some guidelines, give us a date, we're ready to go back mm. um, week or the week after. First of April, first week in August, let's, let's get some dates, um, yeah. please. Absolutely. I think so many people are agreeing with what you said because I think everyone's very frustrated now um, because, you know, sanitisation, be hygiene, good. it's such yeah, an important I mean, part of beauty anyway. <laughs> well, there we go. If, if they're hoping to compensate, you know, for all of the rents that are still having to be paid, you know, all the insurance that's still having to be paid out there, you know, loads of costs that are just going down the drain. Um, and people rely on these these services that we've got to offer. People rely on the relaxation they get, on the personal contact they get, even on the counselling aspect of it that they get. It's a multi-billion pound dollar market. So to the economy, to the UK economy as well, we're a massive contributor. So this is not frilly frolly. This is a big business. We've got big things to contribute. We are growing as a part of the economy. And if we weren't growing as part of the economy, there wouldn't be this uproar. We need to get open again. Aesthetic clinics are open. Dentists are open. You've got a mm -hmm. massive proximity, closeness to a dentist. Yeah. There's no difference. I was at my dentist on Friday. And there's no difference to how close she was to my face mm -hmm. than it would be to a customer's face. Mm -hmm. um, and she was all peepeed up. Her assistant was... There, there, there are ways to make this work. Even if we have to go in and work in the same format and procedures as a dentist is working. Most, some, some beauty therapists and some aesthetic practices work in dentist clinics anyway. Come on, mm, let's exactly. take the pretty frolling out of this. This is big business and we're here to make money. We're here to contribute to the economy. We are here to ensure that we're, we're delivering a great service to customers mm. who actually work and love what we do because we inspire happiness and we contribute to self-esteem. And that's fantastically important to mental health. Yeah. So if somebody's feeling good about their skin, they're feeling good about how they look, then they're going to feel better inside out too. So it's not just about the surface. This is bigger than that. But also, come on, let's get serious. We are big business women. We've got things to contribute. And I'd like to see clear guidelines, a clear date and a strategy and a quick plan for us to get back into business very, very soon. Yeah, so well said. So many people are agreeing with you, Antonia, just saying absolutely, and that your knowledge is so great. We've got a couple of minutes left with Antonia before this webinar ends. So if you do have any questions for her, pop them in the chat box and I will get them answered um, as many as I can in our last few minutes. Um, Heather has asked where you're getting your FPP free masks from. Um, what website or? Um, oh gosh. It is. Um... Do you know, let me just quickly Google it. I did, I did, I don't know why I didn't write this down for you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> let me just find it now. I did, um, I did find a few and there is some that, um, basically any medical, um, Also, I know a few people have been asking about the wipes. They were called Clinel, weren't they? Yeah. yeah Clinel, so, um, yeah. you've got some. I've got so I mean I've got Clinel wipes in every you know there's some just outside now on my landing they're called Clinel um and you, they're, they're amazing I use them on all of the door handles in the house I use them for my hands I use them on my little girl um anyone that comes into the house yet yeah, can you wipe your hands even when we come back in I just wipe the bottom of the shoes uh, mm -hmm. with because obviously with the vapor from uh, speaking everything everything drops to the floor so when you're walking out there in supermarkets whatever it can go onto the shoes so, and they and they smell really great. Sometimes just use them to wipe the house when we when we get back into the car from being in the supermarket or in shops. They're all they're in my compact that my cabinet thing. Wipe my hands with them. My daughter wipes her hands. I wipe the steering wheel. Very very easy. They don't smell strong, and they're a great great thing. Do you want me to go nip and just quickly get them? Show yeah, you. Yeah, and um, I'm just popping oh, your um, email oh. into the chat box as well. It's okay, oh, you can oh, grab oh. them. And just for anybody who's watching, I know a lot of people are asking for that email um, for the training for Antonia. So I am just trying to very unsuccessfully um, type and talk to you at the moment. So I have just popped it into Zoom for anybody who's in there and I will pop it into Facebook as well. Um, but for anybody who's watching it is info at antoniaburrell.com. So if you just email her, put in the subject line, interested in the facial cupping training, then she will come back to you when the course is ready. And Antonia is back with the white set everyone has been asking about. 
Yeah. Okay, and they're so amazing. So you get 200 wipes per pack. Um, and you just take one out and yeah, you could just use it to wipe your hands. They're not super wet, they dry very quickly. Um, you know, if you're out in public, what I sometimes do as well is pop some of these into those little tiny sandwich bags. If I don't want to oh. take a big one of these. Yeah. And then if we're out, or if, even if I'm at my mum's or anywhere now, I'll use one of these <laughs> to feed. Or, you know, I don't know, call me over the top. But these are amazing because, um, yeah, it's also about hepatitis, norovirus. I mean, you know, everything. So if you're finding them in a hospital and, and a dental surgeon, mm. you know these are. Yeah. So I would say, you know, get yourself a couple of packs or six packs will be good and have them everywhere. Get your customers wiping their hands with them or wash their hands or even after they wash their hands, they come in the room. These are, these are you know, serious. Um, mm. I would recommend those, yeah. Yeah, well, Antonia, everyone's saying thank you so much and I have to say thanks as well. It's been a really great webinar with you and you've given everybody so much valuable advice and everyone's just said that they've loved it so well said about everything and um, such a great informative session so i just want to say a very big thank you for joining us today and um, for the webinar and for everybody who's been on the session also, um so on facebook it's fluctuated up to about 70 um on zoom i think it was between i think it's at about 60 but i know lots of people have joined in halfway so just to let you know this will be indefinitely on PB's Facebook page and we will be popping it on YouTube tomorrow morning as well. So if you did miss the start or you did miss anything or you want to watch it again, you can always go back and have another watch and get those mask names and everything else down. But Antonio, I just want to say a massive thank you. Everyone's really chuffed with it. And I really hope that Good you can get back to work properly soon. Um, so, you know, thank you everyone. And I will thank see you. everyone for joining. And um, I look forward to hearing from you soon and really helping to support you out there. Um, yeah. And, you know, really tell, you know, let's, let's work together and let's really show this world the best that we can be because we've got a lot to offer. Yeah. And Antonio, I'm going to email Alice as well to get some details from you about this course because so many people are interested in it. So I'll make sure to put it in the August issue of PB as well if we can, just to oh, get the word out yeah. as well. Yes. But yeah, but thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you all have a really nice afternoon and enjoy the sun. <laughs> Super. Take See care. You. Thank you, Antonia. Bye. Bye.